everybody, Cone Dodger here. Welcome back to Automation, the car company tycoon game. Today we are going to do something, uh, something similar to what I did a few months ago, and that is do a full car build recreation. And once again, it will be off of one of the cars that I own. Uh, we are in beta build 1412. So the full release of the new build is not out just yet. Still working out some kinks and bugs. Uh, so until that happens, until the full public release is out, I will not be working through the scenarios. Uh, mostly because I don't want to spoil them for people that are waiting for the full release to come out to uh, to start them and or play the new update. And because I want them to be played in the version that is most complete. So that they, they showcase the game as it should be showcased. So for today, I will be working in the sandbox to create a car, uh, basically with no no scenario restraints, no uh, out of the realm of the vector automotive challenge, everything like that. It's just a car recreation. So we did my 1991 240SX, which is somewhat modified a few months ago. Uh, today we're going to work out recreating my 1986 Toyota MR2 AW11 which we can do in this new update because we have that body shell available and mid-engine platforms available. So year-wise of course we will have to go back to not that far 1986 and it is <laughs> um, we're gonna say it's corrosion resistant steel because that's what Toyota says it is. Well they lied uh, if you if you want to know what I mean by that, go watch the regular car review on the AW11 MR2. A, it's hilarious, and B, uh, he says it he says it perfectly when when uh, describing it. If somebody has a rust-free AW11 to sell you, they also have a bridge to sell. It's because they don't exist. Uh, even mine, it's it looks pretty good. But uh, the rust is there, hidden underneath years and years of Bondo. <laughs> uh, there it is, McPherson strut, front and back. So you can see that uh, in the back it will have no sway bar in my version. Some of them do, uh, but it's basically the same style setup you would see in a front wheel drive car in the back, just with no uh, no tie rods, no steering rack. So it's it essentially kind of looks like a, uh, a front-wheel drive car would in the back, except there's uh, drive axles. So, uh, I think that is all we need to do in here. We'll once again pick corrosive resistant steel and lie to ourselves. Uh, moving on, that is the only body shell available in this year. And how fitting. And by golly, what do you know, it looks pretty similar, doesn't it? Yeah, I think they may have been looking at an AW11 when they did this body shell. So I will work out trying to make it look somewhat like my car. Uh, it's red, so that works out just fine. <laughs> and uh, I'll come back to you when I'm done.
Alrighty, well, I'm going to call that close enough. I uh, got some pretty good little details in there to make it look very AW11-like, like the little grills that are on the C or B pillars, I guess these would be B pillars. Um, the back's not perfect. I kind of replicated the faux grill they have in the back of the MR2. Uh, the taillights are just not, <laughs> they're not working with me. They don't, they don't want to play nice. Uh, but the visual is not really the, uh, the thing I'm going for. Really, I'm just curious about the statistics. And now we can look at the, um, like the actual quality statistics of it, like the uh, how sporty or tame or whatnot it was. So uh, that'd be cool to see. So let's go ahead and move on to recreating the engine, which is the very famous Toyota engine, the 4AGE. Uh, it happens to be the most boring of the 4AGEs, just the regular 16 valve. Uh, and I actually did build this engine uh, way back when in the, um, in the, no, in the, uh, Japanese engine recreation miniseries. Yeah, I think that's what it was called. <laughs> uh, so, once again, I will kind of, kind of breeze through this since we have seen it before. It is 81 by 77. Click, 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 hitty, click, click. Hey, music, you gonna kick in anytime soon? No? 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 Not gonna do it? <laughs> ah, betas, they're fun. They're fun. Uh, cast, cast, and cast. All it's just really good fun stuff there. Um, Hypertectic cast, I believe, on the pistons, so. though. That changes from year to year, but this one's an 86, so it does not get the second generation of this engine, just the first gen. Alrighty, so moving on. Top end is dual red cam, four valves per cylinder. They did make a five valve per cylinder version, just not in this year, and not in this car. So four valves per cylinder. It is a mixed material, so it's aluminum head on a cast iron block. And the compression ratio is 9.4 to 1. So actually pretty high. That's pretty high for this era of engine. Um, we'll do that 40 and adjust it as we needed. Definitely not the modern style. That one's not bad. And these kind of have, they're known as blue tops. Uh, not really blue, it's kind of a, is it just a regular metal one? Or no? No? Nothing? They not a? Hmm. Well, I don't do white, because I like white. White valve covers are good. Moving on, naturally aspirated. Another thing they did in this year was uh, a supercharged version. We don't have that, and neither does my car. I really wish it did, but it does not. All right, so the year, when you think about it, this uh, this engine was created in 1984, uh, or 1985, and it had multi-point EFI, so it was pretty, pretty highly advanced. You look at how far we're gonna have to advance the year just to get uh, MPI available. So there we go. And it has variable um, intake runner size, so it uses eight intake runners and basically opens up the extra four only under heavy acceleration uh, is to create a better torque curve and uh, improve efficiency. So a lot of pretty high-tech stuff with this engine. And standard intake, regular unleaded. Let's see, I'm trying to remember what the numbers were for MPI. Uh, I think that is a good number. Uh, again, I can adjust it as needed. The red line is 7600 RPM, which is pretty darn good. I will probably have to up the bottom end quality to get us there, but it is a pretty small engine as well. And fairly square. Moving on, it uses just a regular kind of cast header. We are only producing under 116 horsepower, so that works out fine. Nice three-way kit. It has a big kind of, I would say more of a reverse flow muffler on it. Uh, it sits under there sideways, kind of bounces the uh, exhaust around in there. But that's it. And let's see, is there anything I'm forgetting? I don't believe so. Let's go into test mode. See how that bottom end is going to behave. Wow, listen to it roar. I see you, light. 
So I'm going to have to go into... I don't really want to do that. Let's try and give it a little bit a little bit more mixture. And let's try and give it a little bit more game profile. Looks better. Oh, I could be running rich. So we're into a little valve float. And the pistons and the con rods are just starting to get unhappy. But I think it's the valve float that's killing us. So let's go to the top end. This is a pretty high tech little uh, top end they got going here. So we'll give it a pretty decent little quality bump. Start her up. Much happier now. Well, I mean, it's it's going to have some MTBF issues, but uh, it should run just fine. So let's stop. Let us go to the regular test mode. Start her up and see if we can produce 112 horsepower and 97 foot-pounds of torque. torque than needed, and a little less horsepower than we were looking for. Uh, so a little bit of cam work needs to be done, I would say. I actually dropped that or that uh, rev limit down a little since it's... Well, let's, let's adjust the cams and see what that gets us. Let's go up to a 50. So that may have a, a positive impact on that torque versus horsepower, and hopefully gets that peak to be more towards redline. Because uh, driving the car around, it is a very peaky engine, but it's very smooth. It doesn't, it's not peaky in the way like a Honda is peaky. It's peaky, and it's just a very, a very straight line all the way to the red line. It just keeps pulling, keeps pulling, keeps pulling. It doesn't, it doesn't die once you get above like 6,000 like my KA does. Uh, bottom part is being a pain in the butt. So let's give that a quality bump as well. I'm uh, guessing it's the connecting rods, but that is what we have, so uh, still still an issue. And reliability is still 40, so it's it's not the end of the world. Uh, if we drop this down to maybe 7,500, still an issue, but it, yeah, again, not the end of the world. This is not uh, exactly what we're doing. We're not building anything for scenarios. We're just recreating, so I think I can live with that. But I would like to get us up to that 112 horsepower. 85.6 six. 85.6 uh, We got 86.4 So I'd like to give it some timing That would be That would be ideal Because that timing is pretty low That might be too much Let's Test it here uh, 86.3 so we're still okay there And I guess let's give it Even a little bit more camera profile Starting to get a little crazy on that but Gotta do what you gotta do oh, Let's give it a quality bump on that as well. That will help. Ah, uh, yes it did indeed. 110 horsepower. So we're getting very close and now I have a little bit more room with the timing. This should get us there. Or not quite. <laughs> I sounded so confident too, didn't I? 86. Let's give it. Come on buddy, you can do it. I believe in you. We lost horsepower. Well, oh, crud. Okay. So, I'll bump in cam profile again. 112. Perfect. I like it. We'll keep it. 4 AGE. Uh, 16. Just in case I get inspired to build the 20 valve again, because that is a really cool engine. So, now we can move along. We have that engine in there. It is a manual transmission with five speeds. Uh, I still have this in kilometers, don't I? Well, the estimated top speed is 202 kilometers, so we'll just go off of that. And we'll just aim a little higher. Uh, driving the car, it has a very nice spacing for the transmission. It's very, uh, it's very easy to drive around town because unlike my SW20 that I had, the NASW20, it, that one was almost a little bit uncomfortable to drive around town because it had a very peaky engine like it only made power right at the top end it, it just it had a very lumpy kind of power curve it was, it was very uncomfortable to drive 
Uh, let's see what we can do about getting second gear to be closer to, to 60 miles per hour. Uh, it's probably not going to happen, though. That would be all the way down here, and first is not that long. Uh, so we'll just make sure that third... Oh, yeah, it's well within. I'm sorry. I was looking at third gear. So you'd be shifting to second to here. Uh, yeah, you'll still be in third. So that's all good. Moving along. Um, medium compound is fine. It has 14s. Now, my car has no stagger in it, which is staggering. <laughs> uh, because of the mid-engine setup, these cars are very notorious for being hard to drive. They are snappy, snappy oversteer, and will will confuse you with a lot of turn in understeer. So it's uh it's definitely advisable to do a staggered setup on them. My second gen did have a staggered setup, but uh, this one does not. So it has 185s, 14s, and they are 65. Right now. So, just matching my own car, that's what it has. Uh, yeah, that looks good. Yeah, everything looks good. You can adjust the rims offset now, but don't think we need to in this case. Alright. It has little tiny brakes. It's pretty comfortable pads. And uh, the discs do actually take up a large portion of the wheel well. Or, sorry, the wheel. So, give that a pretty good size, front and back, and now it has a little bit larger brakes in the back, not much, cart weighs only um, 2,300 pounds, or 2,350, so it doesn't need that much braking power. Okay, that all looks good does not have any... well, actually it kind of does have some cladding, I would say. Uh, the whole front of it is kind of flat bottom. They, uh, it at least has like the plastic plastic cladding, like under here, uh, and it's flat bottom through here, so I'm going to say it's semi-clad. Cooling airflow, we require 84. We got a lot more than that, probably because of this crazy girl in the back. <laughs> so I'll bring this down to somewhere sensible give it just a little bit more than it needs because that is what Toyota did and that will help our reliability uh, I'm not sure if in this version but it will at least in the future the wing does not provide very much downforce at all it is angled down so you know it, it is there to provide downforce uh, so I'm only gonna give it like a one or two and keep it the same front to back it does have a nice lip in the front as well uh, so a very minor amount of downforce is probably created with those. It's a two-seater, of course. I would say it's, um... I would say it's standard interior. Uh, it's got crank windows and everything's pretty basic. I do really like the interior. For a 1986, it's actually... I think it's a nicer interior than my 91 240, personally. Uh, the 92 MR2 I had, had an awesome interior. The second gen MR2, probably one of the favorite probably one of my favorite interiors in a sports car I've been in. Uh, it's not that it's super exciting to look at or anything like that, it's just uh, it's very ergonomic and, and well made. Uh, entertainment, basic, no power steering, no OBS, no traction control, <laughs> easy there. Uh, and safety, we'll give it standard. It did okay in crash tests, uh, but not fantastic. Alrighty. And now we got these awesome presets, the Cone Dodger options. And I'm going to give it a sporty style suspension, not racing. Not racing, but sporty. And you can see that it automatically sets, sets you up for a rear engine or mid engine car, so it's got more stiffness in the back. Very cool. Very good job by the, by the developers to figure this out and uh, make an easier option for, for us people who maybe don't know exactly where to start with suspension stuff. Alright. So now I've got it saved. And I believe, yep, it did start. I think it ran, yep. Alright, so this is Cone Dodgers 1986 MR2. Save it as 
Capone's MR2. So let's look at some statistics, why don't we? Uh, economy, 38 miles per gallon. Alright, that might be a little bit optimistic. Uh, looks like I've got to add a little bit of weight to it as well. So let's go back. Let's go back to the interior. Give it a little bit more insulation. And... What else can I do? Entertainment, we'll go to standard. That adds a good little bit of weight. And we'll up the quality. Yeah, that should add about 100 pounds just in that. Let's see. 2153. Oh, no, but it didn't quite add enough. We gotta get it up to 2350. So, keep upping the quality. Uh, it doesn't really take it that much. Hmm. Oh, this. Okay, sorry. I was looking at the wrong thing. Uh, yeah, so. Quality of driver's assist don't have any, so that's probably why it's not adding that much weight. And standard versus premium, what's the difference there? Not a whole lot. And insulation doesn't add much either. So we'll just keep going up on the quality on that. Let's see, I'd like to at least get it to 2200. Yeah, 2219, that's okay. Uh, and my car is a sunroof car, not a T-top car, uh, so it loses a little bit in that. And that brought our mileage down to 37.6. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how that is calculated, like what it's telling us, if that's average, if that's just cruising, uh, like street line, 60 miles per hour, that kind of mileage, because uh, it could very easily do that on the highway. Extremely efficient car. Uh, it only has a 12 gallon tank or something like that, and uh, I fill it up once a week and that's more than enough for all the driving I do in a week, so very efficient car to drive. It's pretty slick in the aero and pretty light. Alright, so looking at the stats, tameness 24, sportiness 19, comfort 24, prestige 16, safety 26, that one's kind of relevant. Uh, very nice even numbers and that's exactly how I would describe the car. It's a very even balanced car to drive. It's not, it's not too sporty, it's not overly boring, everything about it just it's just tuned right to be a driver's car, uh, and it's surprisingly an awesome daily driver. I was blown away at how comfortable and how how neutral everything is to drive every day, uh, versus my second gen, which sometimes was a little bit, in, in some ways it was a little too boring, <laughs> it didn't have enough sportiness, and in some ways it was just, the practicality of it made you think, I could really be driving something more exciting here for having no practicality, so... Uh, definitely, so far, I'm, I'm enjoying my first gen more than my second gen. Uh, the only thing I really loved about the second gen was the looks and the noise it made. Because <laughs> I had a really awesome sounding exhaust on it. Uh, so that is my Toyota MR2 build, just for fun here. Uh, I'll scroll through these if you were interested in any of these statistics, you can look at them, but to end the episode out, there's one thing we absolutely have to do, and that is to go to the test track, and we'll look at, uh, say, 0 to 60 and that kind of stuff first, and that is here, 8.2, that is spot on, 0 to 60 time, and it should have about a 16 second quarter mile, and there you have it, 16 second quarter mile. So everything's coming out uh, pretty accurate here. So let's take it to the airfield track so it doesn't take all day. Uh, let's do a lap.
Alrighty, so there it is, a lap around the airfield track, totally not the top gear test track, and it does it in a time of 105.13, so a 1 minute 45 point, hey, that's new, yay, I don't have to do math anymore, total time is done in, in minutes and seconds, best update ever, okay, 1 minute 45.16, so not a blistering time, but uh, it it did the job. It, it did everything it was supposed to do. Alrighty, well, I hope you did enjoy this uh, kind of laid-back casual episode where we've we've discovered what it's like to drive a Toyota MR2 AW11. Uh, and I have to say, I totally have to agree with the regular car review on this car. I, I hate to bring it up again like I'm uh, promoting the guy, but I totally am because his, his videos are awesome. But... Uh, it really is a car that if you have the opportunity to, if you're looking for a cheap sports car to get into, try and find an AW11. It's a really, really awesome car to have. It's, it's the perfect sports car to get into sports cars, in my opinion. Uh, the Miata might be like in the same kind of caliber range, uh, but it's... It's, it's got a little bit more coolness factor to it, if you know what I mean. Uh, to kind of, it, it just makes you feel good driving it. So that's, that's my opinion on the matter. But as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.